Hi. Now do you remember in an earlier tutorial I showed you how to work out the standard deviation sigma for a set of observations x. Standard deviation remember was a measure of the spread of data about the mean. And in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can use or adapt this kind of formula when it comes to working with frequency tables. Now this data can be compressed into a frequency table. It would look something like this. We've got our observations x going from 2, 3, 4 all the way down to 9 as you see in here. And f is the frequency, how often that particular observation occurred. So for instance the 2 here occurred 3 times in the list, 1, 2, 3. The 5 didn't occur at all, there's no 5 in there, and so on. Now when it came to working out the standard deviation when it was just presented as a list, we would have done a calculation something along these kind of lines. Sigma the standard deviation would be equal to, and if we use this version of the formula, it was equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the observations, that's this capital sigma here, sigma of the squares of the observations, the sum of them. So we would have done 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared for the first bit, and then we would have done plus 3 squared, and then plus 4 squared plus 4 squared, and so on, all the way up to the 9 squared. And when we had done that part, we'd have divided by n, the number of observations that you see here, 14. And then we would have had to subtract the mean of this set of numbers, all squared. So we'll just write that in like that. Well that's how we would have done it, but how are we going to do it if it's presented in a frequency table? Well it's dead easy. Because all we've got to do is just extend this table. First of all, we've got to work out what the sum of the squares are. This top line here. Well we know that we might as well only just work out one of these x's here in this group of twos. Let's just circle it, okay? If we look at this list of twos here, this block in here, then all we need to do is square the 2, 2 squared is 4, and times it by the 3 because it occurred 3 times over. So that's going to be 4 times 3, which is going to be 12. When it comes to the 3 here, let's just circle that. It only occurred just the once, so we just need to do 3 squared, which is 9, and because it occurred once, it's just going to end up being 9. And hopefully by now you've just got the idea that when it comes to the 4's, we've got two 4's here, square one of them, 4 squared is 16, and then because there were two of them, we just need to do 16 times 2, 4 squared times 2. 16 times 2 is 32. So what we're doing then is working out the subtotals here for this list of the sum of the squares by doing x squared times the frequency. So it would have a column, something like this. Well if we were to carry on and complete this column, it's going to look like this. Now we need to add this column up. This column is the subtotals then of this list here. So when we add it up, we're doing the sum of sigma of x squared f. And if you do add that up, what you get is 494. So this formula needs to be adapted because we're doing sigma of x squared f. Now when it comes to dividing by how many observations we've got, the n value, then 
Okay, you could count these, okay, and you'll find that you get 14. But what we're really doing is now adding up this total here, sigma f. So sigma f gives us the equivalent value of n, 14. So the formula needs to be adapted, so we'll just change that to the sum of the frequencies, sigma f. So what we've got now is the first part of our result. What we need to do now is find the mean and then square it. And that's why I've left this column here blank. Because can you remember that from a frequency chart, to get the mean, you need to do the observations times the frequencies to get the subtotals. And then we're going to total them together and finally get sigma f, the final total of this list. So if you do x times the frequency, 2 times 3 is 6, and so on, then you'll get the following. And so if we just divide that off and add this total up, sigma xf, just squeeze it in there, what you get is 76. That is the total then of all of those numbers there. So when it comes to working out x bar, x bar is going to be the sum of xf divided by the sum of f. And that becomes 76 then divided by 14, which if you work it out on your calculator gives you 5.428 and so on. And I won't round that because we're going to use it up here. So if I was given a frequency table then, with my values, I'd construct these columns here and work out these summary statistics that are on the bottom here. And therefore, I could say the standard deviation sigma here is equal to, through this formula, sigma x squared f, that's 494, divided by how many observations we had, which was 14, minus the mean all squared, 5.428 and so on, squared, and then we take the square root of all of that answer. And what do we get? Well, it comes out at 2.411 and so on. So rounded, say, to two significant figures, that's 2.4 to 2 SF. Now, not only do you get data which is discrete, where you know the exact values, but you get data given in grouped frequency tables. Now, suppose I had a group frequency table giving the heights of a number of students and we've got the frequency that these heights occurred in these class intervals. You can see that this 4 here represents 4 students with a height between 150 and 160 centimeters. We're greater than or equal to this lower number but less than the upper number. So for this one three students had a height of more than or equal to 170 centimetres but less than 180 centimetres and so on. Now when it comes to working out then the formula here for the standard deviation, the only difference is that we need to take our observations as being the midpoints of each of these class intervals. So our calculation will only give an estimate of the standard deviation for this set of data. So what are those midpoints? Well, halfway between 140 to 150 is 145. And then you've got 155, 165, 175. And for this last one, you've got 182.5. So you need to find out those midpoints. They become your observations. Now all we need to do is work out this formula here 
for the standard deviation. We need to get x squared f. So that's quite easy to do. Just make a column x squared f and square your observed values times them with the frequency. Well if you do that you should get and if you do the total of this in other words the sum of x squared f you should find you get 399,456.25 we need the sum of f so we'll just work out what the sum of f is going to be if you add that up you should find you get 15 so what else do we need? well we need the mean squared and to do that we'll just extend the table we need to work out xf so if we do 145 times 2 we're going to get 290 and you should be able to complete the table if you do you'll get which when totaled will give you the sum of xf and that comes to 2442.5 so to get the mean x bar we need to do the sum of xf then all over sum of f and if you do that you've got 2442.5 divided by 15 and that comes to 162.83 and so on now to wrap things up we just need to calculate the standard deviation then and according to the formula it's the square root of the sum of x squared f which we've got down here as 399456.25 divide that by the sum of f which is 15 and take away the mean squared and the mean we've got down here as 162.83 recurring squared. If you work that out you'll find you get 10.757 and so on which let's say if we round it to three significant figures that's going to be 10.8 then to 3 SF. Alright? Well I hope that's given you some idea then how we can go about finding the standard deviation then from any frequency table whether it be discrete data or in this case group data where we have to find the midpoint of our intervals okay well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial